Good morning and welcome to the Small Business Cheerleader podcast. I'm Nicola from NW Marketing, the Small Business Cheerleader, and I'm joined today by Vanessa from Vivacity Marketing. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Nicola. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We are both in the marketing realm and we love to help small businesses nail this marketing world. So I want to chat today about all things that we can give value to our listeners in regards to this. So firstly, I want to know all about you. Introduce yourself to our listeners. Sure. So um, my name is Vanessa Garrity and my business is Vivacity Marketing. I've been in business for about four and a half years now. So coming up to my fifth year, which I can't believe. So um, Vivacity Marketing is a boutique marketing agency and we generally work with professional services businesses and health and beauty businesses to help them really elevate their marketing and build a dynamic marketing management strategy and plan for their business and also help them with their digital marketing so I kind of started my business um four and a half years ago when I was made redundant for my corporate job so I'd worked in corporate you know marketing for 17 years showing my age now and um, was made redundant and I had a young child at the time so then I thought right now is the universe telling me to you know it's time to start your own marketing consultancy and that's kind of how the business started and it's just grown and evolved over the last four and a half years yeah, it's amazing because uh, we're, we're obviously part of the same uh, networking, female mm. business networking. And and to see you working with um, a lot of the small business owners in there and seeing them grow their businesses has been amazing. And you also have an online marketing school to help those in startup phase as well, which is great. That's right. Yeah, service and, marketing school. Yeah, yeah it, it's just um, when people start talking about marketing and they see how much you know in regards to what uh, areas you've been working in, it is great that we can give that expertise back to small mm. businesses, the corporate side and the strategy side that sometimes is missing Definitely, from yeah. um you know small business things they can find online etc to have that that strategy which really does help them grow mm. which which leads me to my first question what do small businesses where do they go wrong with their marketing what are you seeing from uh working with them over the past four and a half years and and what would be your tips in regards to that So there's an easy one to answer. I just did a reel on this yesterday. Um, The number one way that small businesses go wrong is they jump into doing marketing tactics. So like Google ads or Facebook ads, and they haven't done the strategy piece first. So I'm all about, if you follow me online already, I'm always talking about marketing strategy first approach to your marketing. Because you've got got to get really clear on who you're marketing to what message you're you know, conveying to them and how you're going to kind of stand out in the market. And there's a whole lot of things that you've got to do in a marketing strategy and plan. But if you skip that piece, what's going to happen is you're going to jump into what I call a tactical approach. And then what happens is you have a bit of success doing it that way for a while. And then it kind of dries up and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do next. I don't know what's gone wrong. And they're kind of at a loss. So they have a little bit of success and then they go, okay, crap, what do I do now? But that's kind of not working for me anymore. And it's really that they've, They've skipped the first step and they've jumped straight to the second step. And I actually was only talking to a, a client this week who I'm going to be working with on with a marketing strategy. And she was telling me, you know, this is what's happened and I don't know what's going on. And I said, I can tell you straight away what's after going on. You skipped your, your strategy piece. And this I see this 100% of the time with the clients that come to work with me. They all skip that piece and go straight into the, oh, I need to get clients. I'm going to jump into, you know, Google ads or Facebook ads or whatever it is. Yeah, that's 100%. And you're talking my language because... I'm sure you see that too, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's just that thing of I have them um, come to me. I had a client last week wanting to um, do, I need need leads, I need a lead magnet, an email nurture sequence, I need to do this, I need leads, I'm not getting any. And then I said, all right, that's fine. We can most certainly, you know, look look at that. But um, what's the ideal client and and what's the problem that you're solving for them? Oh, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I used to have corporate over on LinkedIn and now I want to do business coaching for female small businesses. Hmm. I said, yeah, but are you hanging out where they are? Are you doing um, a lead magnet that would provide, you know, something of help to them? Yeah, well, exactly. I don't really know what they need. Well, mm-hmm. okay, well, then we're not doing a lead magnet or email nurture sequence. We're not going exactly. anywhere near paid advertising. Yeah. Because until you get clear on your ideal client and where they are, what their pain point is, it's just not going to happen. And yeah. that's why, so from your experience, because mm. you um, do a lot of marketing strategy, the plans for clients, putting it all together, yeah. 
what do you find that um, or what do you include in those plans that maybe people hadn't thought of or the the key areas to include if you are putting your own marketing plan yeah, together? Definitely. Well, the first thing I always do for clients is I do market research with their ideal client. So if they're an existing business, I'll get them to give me, you know, five to 10 names of people they've already worked with. And I'll go through a series of questions with them via telephone surveys. Um, and that really gets helps me to get clear on what that pain point is why they went searching for a solution online, um, you know, how they found that business, what was their path to purchase, so what are all the marketing touch points that they actually moved through before they decided to work with that product or service or that business. Um, and then also it'll uncover, you know, if they've been used a competitor potentially previously, why do they switch from the competitor to, to using, you know, their product or service? Because um, that gives you a wealth of information around what they're doing really well. I also ask them what, what, you know, what does the person do really well? What could be improved? And you get a raft of information from these calls, you know, and I always do these calls myself. I don't outsource any of this because I want to understand their ideal client. I want to, it helps me build the whole marketing strategy and plan out from this point. So it all starts with those market research calls. So they are a crucial point of my marketing strategy that I do for clients. So that's the first one. That's just the very first thing you got to do. There's a lot more to it. A hundred percent because it is because you can't, without the data, you can't put mm. a strategy together. And, and exactly. I think the, the main thing I try and, um, as you've mentioned previously, is the fact that marketing is the strategy and tactics is everything else. You know, your, your advertising, your social media, mm. your PR, publicity, all of that is a tactic. Um, mm. And people jump straight to it because they feel that that's the thing that they can get onto and they can, oh, yeah, I'll do, I'll do all the other work later because yeah, I don't exactly. need that. I don't have time for that. But what they don't have time for is it is later on when it all goes pear-shaped, when mm. they're not getting the leads or they're getting leads that aren't aligned. I'm finding that that's a big thing. People yes. are not getting, they're either getting time wasters or they're getting people that are not aligned with what lights them up as a visionary exactly. for their own yeah. business. Because it's not their ideal client. They don't no. know who their ideal client is. That's why they're just attracting anyone and everyone because they haven't and, got and clear on that ideal client piece. Who wants to work with just everyone and everyone from a, a state of push energetics as opposed mm. to pulling in aligned clients? You're pushing because you need these leads. Yeah, it might work. As you said, you might have success in the short term, but yeah. long term for your business, you'll end up being burnt out, hating it, having clients yes. that end up um, draining your energy. Sucking the life out of you. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. what I do, like after I've done that research, then I will build their ideal client, their buyer persona, customer avatar, whatever you want to call it, because I've got a really good understanding then of the types of clients that they're working with and then from that then you know I will have already have done a bit of a competitor analysis so this is all still what goes into your strategy um I would do a website audit so look at their current website is it clear what they're offering are their services clear is there a you know download is there a way to capture email all of that look at the path to purchase through the website um, and then I also develop a, a core message and a brand promise for them as well so that's going to help them with their marketing in their ads on their website etc so a brand promise is a single sentence that summarizes what you do and then a core message is an expansion of that which you know can go on your website or your about us page or be used in ads that type of thing um, and then I also create a, a content and a video strategy for them as well and that, so that's all before I've even got into any tactics so the, what I find then the market research findings will help me plan the tactics because they would have told me what their path to purchase is. So, and then I build the tactics as the second part. So that's why people skip the, the strategy. They go straight to the tactics because that's what they've been taught. They're looking online. They're following all these people who are like, you need a lead magnet, you need a sales funnel, you need paid ads, but they've just skipped that whole step beforehand. No, and that is where the overwhelm comes in because- yes. These these small business owners or solopreneurs or people that are starting out on their own are googling and 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 listening to webinars mm. and and they're listening to you know free things that are telling them you need a funnel you need um you need everything that is automated you need this mm. you need that which is overwhelming them in the sense totally. already but yeah. then in regards to what content are they going to put in all of this mm, you know what content exactly. are they going to put in a lead magnet yeah. and an automated email funnel and a sales page and a, so this is where people just either stop yeah. or they do it all wrong and spend so much money on all of these uh, softwares mm. and programs and paid ads and and then see very little back for it and I think it's an investment 
uh, in a strategy straight up is yes. we'll always make everything else go in flow. And even if you have a social media manager, a graphic designer, a website designer, and a copywriter, mm. if you have that document first that tells all of that information, it makes everything else flow in alignment. That's what yeah, I Yeah, because it because you can give that document to your team. So a lot of people I do marketing strategy and plans for, and um, they have VAs and they have different you know people that they outsource things. So I'm like, give this document to your team, or even better, get your team to come. You know, we'll all, I can present to all of you at once when I'm presenting it to them because then everyone's on the same page. And you know, I tell them all, print off that buyer persona, stick it up on your desk, so you know when you're doing a social media post or creating a piece of content, is this going to appeal to that person? Is this going to help them? Is it going to move them? You know, further along their buying journey. Um, so yeah, I mean, you've got to start back there before you get to there. <laughs> yeah, and that that is, I think, the one learning for uh, people new to small business is definitely that um, marketing is your strategy and not your tactics. Yes, um, exactly. And people confuse the two, and they do. They said, yeah. I'm doing marketing. What do you mean? I'm doing all the marketing. Mm. I said, I, are you doing all the marketing? I'm seeing you put up a couple of posts on your Instagram page. I'm not sure that's marketing. Pretty yeah. sure that's a tactic to get your message out. Have you got a message? Well, no, I've got time yeah. for that bullshit. You haven't got yeah. time for it, but you've got time <laughs> to complain and Google and watch 5,000 webinars about what exactly. other stuff that is not driving you forward. Yeah. So I get really passionate as you do about making sure that people understand the difference and, and yeah. really start doing Between the, the work. Two. So and I think like the number one question that I get asked uh, or that people say to me is, I just don't know where to start with my marketing. There's just so much I could be doing. What's going to work best for my business? And that, yeah. like the, the answer to that is easy. Okay, well, let's start with a strategy and a plan for you. And then it's going to be easy. And then what people say after they have that document, they're like, oh my God, this is great. I've got direction now. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know who I'm talking to. I know what tactics I've got to be doing. And they can plan then their weeks accordingly. And then marketing isn't overwhelming. It becomes easy because they've got a plan, you know? Yeah. And it's easy, easier to outsource then. Isn't yes, it? exactly. Because yeah. if you're trying to outsource to a VA or a social media management, a graphic designer, a website designer, and you have no idea yeah. about what or who, what your offering really is, who you're talking to, what you actually want for your business. I mean, and then you get it done and it costs two and a half grand, three, four, five grand for mm. um, all of this to get done. And then you don't like any of it or it doesn't yeah. work. It doesn't talk. Yeah to anyone exactly and that's the other thing yeah. another thing that's useful is um getting a brand voice guide done so i work with some copywriters in my business with my clients and often like if they're a brand new business and they're not really clear on what style of voice or tone they want to have online and um, then it's good idea is to get a, a brand voice guide which will help you write captions and write your website and write all those things so that's another thing that can be also included in your strategy depending where the business is in their life cycle yeah, hundred percent. Again, if you have all these things as an investment in the beginning, your mm. flow for the first five years of your business, which is usually the hardest in growing, yes. um, uh, it will just will just be so much easier in getting done. So, I highly recommend all of that. I love it yeah. all because it yeah. just makes a difference. But I want to know, with regards to you and your marketing mm -hmm. agency, yep. so what marketing channels have worked well for you to help you grow a global agency yeah. um, with everything that's out there now? Yeah. Well, the number one thing that I've done and I do, I do it really well is business networking. So and I hate that word because it's like sounds really corporate. Um, but I just got out and about the first two years in particular, I was in business. I was out and about at everything, just getting out where small business owners were. And that's how we met, obviously, you and I, Nicola. Um, you know, just getting out and, list, you know, meeting people, listening to people. And I always go into these events thinking, OK, who can I connect? You know, so I actually shared a quote from Simon Sinek today on my story. And it says, you know, approach business networking around not what business is here for me but more about like who can I connect in the room and that's such a piece of advice that I was told very early on you know in my kind of business journey so business networking would definitely be the first but like find events that your ideal client is going to be at and that are suitable for you so I, I tried a lot of events and then I kind of found the few three or four that actually resonated with me and I stuck to those because then you'd start building some kind of long-term relationships with people in those events because you're, you're there regularly and seeing them all the time so a lot of my business in the beginning came from that the second one which I focused on since the very beginning is search engine optimization so mm -hmm. I rank really well on google for um, my key search terms and that's because I've had you know an seo strategy from the very beginning so I've been really clear what I want to rank for so marketing consultant Perth is my number one thing I want to rank for and the marketing coach Perth for the two that I've optimized my website my blogs everything for since I've launched my business so I get a lot of my leads directly from Google now they've never even heard me before, of me before uh, because they find me on Google and then they also see that I've got you know 70 plus Google reviews so you know I, I ask all my clients nicely for Google reviews and if they don't do it then I remind them <laughs> so I do get a lot of Google reviews 
because of that, I've got 70. Um, and, you know, within the, that's going to help my SEO as well. So I think yeah. that's the second, the second one is SEO. And the third one is really probably content marketing and social media. I probably would combine the two of them. So, you know, I had a content plan in place, which I stick to, you know, with my blogs, I was putting out my videos, my newsletters, all those things. And I stuck to it diligently week in, week out. I've probably lacking, you know, got a bit lack now in the last year or so. But, um, you know, I was very diligent about putting that consistent content out that was kind of helping people, adding value. So giving a lot of stuff away for free. And people used to say to me all the time, oh, my God, you give so much away for free. Are you not worried that people are just not going to work with you or they're going to copy it? I'm like, if you think what I give away is free is good, you know, wait till you come and actually work with me, <laughs> get the good stuff then. So, yeah. but pe people have this notion that, oh my God, I can't be giving away free stuff. I can't be giving away stuff because competitors are watching. But you know what? People would have to piece together all the bits of freebies I give away to kind of build a marketing strategy and plan. And they're not going to do that. No, that's exactly right. And you were one of the first ones I'd seen, um, like you said, consistently on video, um, mm. providing value, um, showing up LinkedIn and on Instagram and just making all of those value pieces come together and people forget it's a long-term game. Most people Big don't make time. a purchase within the first 18 months of seeing you. Not at all, yeah. You know, you're either lead magnet downloading to an email sequence, warming them up for years. Yeah. I know my business coach I worked with last year, I'd followed her, I think, for 18 months. Yeah. And then right when I was at a stage where I needed to invest, uh, investigate online um, courses and things, and there was something there, bang, done. Because yeah, I'd already had that trust factor built up exactly. that I knew what she was talking about. So it's a long-term game. It people is a long-term game. That's what people yeah. want, these golden bullets. And they're like, how can I get this quickly? And it's like, it's not going to be quick. You've got to have patience, especially with SEO. People are like, I want to be on page one of Google, you know, within two months. It's like, that's not going to happen. You've got to just manage expectations. But right. like, to your point, Nicola, people say to me all the time, oh, I've been following you on LinkedIn for six months, 12 months, watching your videos. So when I was ready to, you know, work on my marketing, I knew you were the person that I needed to work with. Yeah. So it is a long game. And that's what people have to learn a bit of patience. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. I did um, a series of reels um, just when I started out on reels and um, showing up and doing stuff. And I got uh, two calls from people who saw me on reels there you and go. thought, well, she sort of, oh, I, I, I need marketing, but she keeps showing up and I just sort yeah. of like a vibe, you know, like, so what you're going to do is attract people that are attracted to your vibe. I'm yes. not for everyone. You're not for everyone. No. People out there are not for everyone because you're going to attract aligned. And that's why we're saying, isn't it? If you know yes. what sort of content, what voice you're talking about, what you're passionate about, you're going to start attracting people who want that thing. Yeah, and exactly. um, yeah, long-term game people, remember that. It's yes. not about putting up one Write that down. thing to get <laughs> 2, million view, 2 million views and then get 50,000 clients because it even the people who do go viral, it takes a while for them to actually convert into being yeah, definitely. the leader in their industry because, yeah. um, again, they show up every day. I know that's a lot of content to put out. I mean, like reels are a great way to show your personality. So I'm actually having a lot of fun with reels. So I've completely adapted my Instagram strategy now. I used to do IGTVs weekly. And now I'm like, no one's watching them anymore. And they've gotten rid of IGTV. So now I'm on to reels. I'm trying to put out, you know, two a week. Um, yeah. But it's fun. I, you know, it's fun. I enjoy doing it. And they're short videos as well. Whereas my IGTV were longer videos. So it's actually, it's not as much of an effort when you're just kind of putting out two shorter videos a week. But you have to adapt and really, I mean, I'm sure you see Nicola in marketing. It's changing, evolving all the time so what worked oh, three I years do. ago five years ago is not working now you know well look I think I did um an overview a few weeks ago of my life 23 years in marketing and um I remember the first few I started in 98 when I started we were faxing all of our briefs across <laughs> to the ad agency and we couldn't actually see what it looked like because there was no pdfs or emails so they had yeah. to fax a black and white version of whatever press ad it was I was running and I just had to hope it looked all right yeah. when it came out so the the quickness of everything now, yeah. I've got to be on top of this. I've got, whereas we used to wait three days for a letter to come as a response. Mm. So you had a bit of breathing time. You did. Yeah, definitely. And the overwhelm now for small businesses to be successful within the first month and nail everything is immense. So people need to realize that that, that is not sustainable no. um, and to do the proper work. Um, that exactly. hasn't changed since you and and I think, started yeah exactly I mean I started my marketing career 2003 so about five years after you um and I remember when I was like working in corporate like you had a big budget for tv for radio for mm -hmm. outdoor and a bit of ambient media and that was it I was only a tiny bit of website website like the World Wide web had only been around for a couple of years mm -hmm. so and then so it was really the big players in the market that competed like small businesses didn't have a chance because tv was so expensive radio was so expensive but now digital 
it's an even playing field for everybody and that's what I love about it you know that's yeah. been a really good um kind of movement in the, in the space yeah it's, big I mean, time. It's, it's good and it's also pressure because you yes. feel like you have to be across five platforms whereas yes. beforehand you just did what you did and yeah. you put a flyer in a letterbox if you're a small business yeah. but you couldn't afford anything else whereas now you have to be competing with everyone else in their mm. same platforms yeah um and trying to show up so that's where niching down hard mm. making sure you're clear on who you're um, serving and what their pain point is so you can niche down and be very specific in your content because yeah. what I tell my clients is that you you can't do awareness campaigns everyone comes to me saying I need to do an awareness campaign mm. you can't do an awareness campaign you're not Nike or Coke you don't yes. have the budget you yeah. need to do direct response marketing yeah, exactly. put an offer out there yeah. call to action give them something quick and easy that they can do and get something from because if you do brand awareness you're never going to get seen amongst it's costly yeah it's, it's very costly cost fortune yeah. and um so i just need people to stop thinking they need to do brand awareness because there is no brand yeah. <laughs> unless you're nike or coke there's no brand your direct response marketing solving a problem for a specific niche with an easy um that's something easy for them to do whether it's to download a lead magnet have a discovery yeah. call make it quick and easy for them to do because people just don't have the time now to exactly hard around it but speaking. i think for the for the brand awareness piece i mean by you showing up a video and showing up your content that is creating awareness for your brand so that kind of fits that piece for a small business who doesn't have the budget to do a big you know brand awareness campaign so if you just keep consistently showing up and grow your followers organically without buying any um then you know people will be attracted to you as you say by your reels or a blog you put out or whatever it is and it'll all happen uh, via what I call inbound marketing where you're attracting the clients in rather yeah. than that old uh, outbound marketing approach and you can show up without I mean if you really 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 don't want to use your face to show up although I would highly recommend you do yes um yeah. of course reels with um you know what you offer making your personality through the reels mm. in regards to what you offer if you're product based or even a service based you can have fun with the content definitely. so you can start that way until you're more confident but definitely if you can somewhat show up as um whoever you are um please don't try and be someone you're not because people no. will see through that They'll in about it, yeah. three seconds exactly so and, and there's often and there's often like a couple of touch points that'll happen as well so for example i did a reel uh, i can't remember what it was before christmas at some stage and um then somebody who i know through networking saw the reel she'd got, kind of built a relationship with me, with me previously for six months through networking and then she saw the reel and was at the right time and place i was kind of just going through these are the services i can help you with was that kind of reel where it's pointing and she was like oh i need google ads so she then reached out to me so you know your reel isn't your only touch point there'll be other touch points as well in that kind of marketing plan that will help you get to the point where they're ready to convert and say okay i'm gonna you know dm you or whatever so yeah, don't think yeah. that don't think that one reel is going to get your clients there might be a few things behind the scenes that they've seen as well that get you the clients you know exactly Exactly. And that's why email is important because you yes. own that data and the nurturing that comes from emails. Yep. And yeah, so it's an overall strategy and it's not just putting all your eggs in one basket. Because we saw when Instagram went down last year, I know um, everyone just shat themselves because they realized they had no touch point at exactly. all to any of their perspective or their followers and they lost their mind. And all I saw was everyone putting up stories about sign up to my e-newsletter. I do have yes. one here. Put, put your email in. I here. know this desperation. I'm yeah. so funny because then I was like, oh, I'm just going to head over here to LinkedIn then for a bit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and I, you just got to make sure there's a backup. I'm over on LinkedIn. You're on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, we both have email databases and e-newsletter yeah. styles. And I think if you do that, you and obviously if you sell your business too, your email is an asset. Yeah. And um, it's worth money, like $5 an email, basically to convert someone to an email. Um, yeah, I definitely. found so it's worth money if you if you definitely worth that, it. If you do sell your business yeah big time and the other thing i just will mention quickly is it's so important to pull all of this together to have a crm so a customer relationship management system so mm -hmm. i tend to use hubspot which is a free one and it, you, you can get so far with the free version but it's a great place for, to have all your client details in one place what i love about it is you can link it with your email so if you can keep track of like an email you know conversation that you might have had six months ago and then if the client gets back in touch with you you're like what were we talking about i remember now you can set yourself tasks you can assign tasks to your team so it's really great to and then you can put in like your deals to use a sales world that's what it's called in there but you, know, you can put in okay what deals are in the pipeline this month what deals do i need to close as i get to the end of the month and what you know you can really forecast out the next few months what you're kind of 
uh, cash flow forecast looks like. So I definitely recommend getting a CRM for your business. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Instead of yeah. sticky notes stuck all over your yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you can get there, that's exactly right. I mean, um, for me, um, I use Kajabi because that's where yeah. my online course is and all my e newsletters. And again, and then I was before that was uh, using Active Campaign as a CRM yeah. that went with the thing. And then, you know, even things like um, Asana, if you have, you know, they have the free ones where you can plan mm. all of your projects and then have things, so many options. You find the one that resonates with you, the yeah. one that you can um, see yourself using. And I've just, and they have free versions and trials. I'd, I'd go around and find which one talks to you. And then, um, like you say, talk to people that have used them for similar things you're wanting to use them for. And you'll yeah. get more of that because they will try and sell you on everything, all these things exactly. and try and upgrade you to where it costs you a thousand dollars a month to do mm. multiple things. But like you said, there's free versions. It's yeah. all you need as a startup, just somewhere to put the data and yeah. to chase you up and keep you accountable. And um, yeah. I definitely love project management software. It keeps me on task. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, whatever works for you, go yeah. find it. But you find need the something. right one. Yeah. yeah, you need something. And you also need to look at your analytics as well. Um, yes. So, you know, make sure you're looking at your Google Analytics. You have that set up. Look at your analytics and your Google My Business as well and have Google Search Console set up too if you can. So yeah. both on the top a, three, I recommend. Perfect. It is amazing. People forget all those and they forget they that Google My Business is free. Why do you not spend the time to do that and set yeah. that up? I don't know. So, and yeah, and Google Console, again, you can go in and do that yourself and it will give you all yeah. of the data you need and connecting your website, you know, to your Google Analytics and then you can set up, you know, your conversions in there and, exactly. help, you know, getting a bit more advanced. But yeah, with your Facebook ads now that iPhone and Facebook had that big fight, you can sort of mm. track it a bit more now using your Google Analytics. So yeah. uh, it does pay either to get someone to do it all for you so you know it's set up or make yeah. sure that, um, but you're um, all across SEO and digital and Google ads and things. So you're definitely um, the person to talk to if you, you know, in that space and wanting yeah. some clarity because someone who does it daily is definitely a person you want to talk to because it yeah. is a bit overwhelming. If it is a bit overwhelming when you start, you're like, what, what does each platform do? But um, yeah, they're, all exactly. Google, they're all Google products, which is a good thing. And then you have the one login for all of them. So And um, that's perfect. And everything, yeah. everything needs to be all in one these days, yeah. I reckon. That's Otherwise it. everyone's yeah. just losing their mind with that many goddamn passwords and last pass is a lifesaver for me yes definitely, if you're looking yeah. for your passwords last pass has been a lifesaver for many times for me i have that many software because i have so many clients doing all their own different softwares there's yeah. just passwords everywhere so to keep Plus it from safe. a security a security point of view because yeah, client... they create the longer passwords that are secure yes. and you're not yeah. using the same password for like 20 softwares exactly. where you know the dark web will find you and take yeah, it down. Yeah, and, so, and so many people are getting hacked now, like a client of mine that works in the cybersecurity space and she's like, especially social media accounts, that's a huge mm -hmm. one. Like yeah. she's had a few clients whose, you know, Instagram has been hacked just for like, they don't even have two-step authentication on, like at, at a minimum, you need to have that on, you know, yeah. because yeah. hackers are getting more sophisticated, more advanced. I've had people who've lost their websites and um, come to me going, can I get it back? You know, so just be really careful with those passes. I think LastPass is a, a great tool to use. Yeah, it's um, so true. We had a client that um, had their Facebook um, ad account hacked and they were using, they'd gone in, created a pixel as well, gone in and created a conversion campaign oh and were gosh. selling T-shirts off their account with a budget. They tried a budget of 10000 a day. It got rejected by Facebook. They then tried $2,000 and it got through. Oh, my and so God. Because it was done, um, must have been overseas, it was done in the when we were asleep. By the yeah. time they found it at 9 o'clock, um, it was uh, 1500 spend. Uh, before we could turn off the ad right. so yeah so be very careful very careful it, it's it, I would recommend checking ad account every day if you can yeah, just definitely. if you're especially if it's open or you're running ads or so um, what they did with this one is they went in with the ad duplicated an ad so it looked like one of the yeah. ads but the only difference was it had web sales and this client yeah. doesn't sell on web so yeah. that was the only indicator. And of course, the budget was like two grand um, when yeah. they spent like maximum of $500 ever in a lifetime of a campaign. This was 2000 a day. Yeah, so wow. it happens a lot. So just be careful. Keep on track because if you don't check them, imagine if mm. that had kept going. 
Yeah, I know. So, it would have been yeah. out of a lot of money. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's a lot of money. And you yeah. can set spending limits, as you know, as yeah, well. Yeah, so, definitely. You know, Always set your daily spending limits. Yeah, yeah, put all these things in place so you don't get trapped like that. Yeah, exactly. Well, Vanessa, it has been amazing because you know I could talk about this all day. I know, we both could. <laughs> I know, because we've just, I don't know, there's just so much that you want to get out there to people yes. to, to make sure that they're they're taking on board and they're because you and I hate people wasting, especially small businesses, wasting money. Yes, on these time. ads because we both do Facebook ads for clients yeah. on various levels and we know what to do for them to get them ready for it to mm. work and I just hate seeing some of these places just go well no you need to spend more to see results that's mm. why you're not seeing results because you're not spending enough that is my nemesis in marketing yes if I can, if I can stop at least two three four people doing that I'll be yeah. happy because I've seen way too many of it over my time so yeah, definitely. Take into account everything that Vanessa said in regards to setting up your marketing plan. And um, we're both on the same page about ideal mm -hmm. clients, et cetera. So yeah. that is so important. Explore that. So where can people find you? Find yeah. your marketing school, find all of your services, et cetera. Where's yeah. the So best place to go is my website. So I'll spell it out for you because it's a bit of a long one. So it's V-I-V-A-C-I-T-Y marketing.com.au. And on the homepage of my website, you'll see I've got an ebook that you can download for free, um, The Ultimate Guide to Small Business Marketing, which is a great place to start if you are a startup business. And if you go into my services, you'll see uh, Marketing School, which is my online course and all the different services that I offer there. And I'm the awesome. same on socials. It's just uh, at Capacity Marketing. And you can check out all of Vanessa's reels. Uh, there's yes. lots of dancing involved. But I love value, dancing. Value-packed <laughs> information that comes with the dancing. So you get both. Yeah. I mean, like what yeah, more could double you Double whammy, want? double whammy. <laughs> what more could you want from someone? You know, value and dancing. It's all about that. That's it. Um, it's been awesome to talk. And uh, go and check Vanessa out online. And um, I look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, Nicolette. Okay, bye. Bye.